Now I get asked a lot on how to create a simple portfolio with those cool filters with Elementor Pro. In this short video, I'll show you exactly how to achieve this effect so you can add an extra level of interactivity to your website. Now, it is pretty easy to achieve and doesn't require any special tools apart from Elementor Pro. We need the Pro version so we have access to the portfolio widget that's the basis for this particular effect. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the effect and then I'll show you how to create your own version. So before we start taking a look at how we do things, let's take a quick look at what it is we're going to do. This is basically a project's portfolio. Each one of these is a post, a standard WordPress post. And as you can see, we've got a nice simple filter at the top that allows us to take a look at the different types of architecture or different kinds of projects that they've been working on. So what this is doing is it's just fundamentally using the featured image of a typical post categorized through categories. Again, all normal WordPress functions. And then we're going to create this. If we click through one of these particular projects, it'll take us through then to a detailed page that's a little bit more customized. This is all done through the Elementor Pro theme builder. We've also tied in some information that's pulled in from advanced custom fields. I'm not going to cover those aspects of it. I've already covered all of this in its own dedicated video. I just want to show you how to create this portfolio project section. I'll put a link to the full video though down below if you want to check that out. Okay, so now we've seen what, let's take a look at how things are set up in the dashboard of WordPress. Let's take a look now, we've got our post section and if we open up a post, so we say all posts, and we'll take a look at one of these posts. If we go into it, it's no different, it's just a normal WordPress post. If we, and if we scroll to the bottom, there's some extra advanced custom fields, fields that are in there that you don't need for this particular tutorial. So you can ignore those completely. If we take a quick look at the categories, you can see this is just in a typical WordPress post category called portfolio. That's the key thing to this. We need to make sure that it's in the portfolio because we're going to use that as the query. And then we're also going to use some tags. Now the tags are what we use to define exactly what project they apply to. So if we come back over to this, tags are used for commercial and parks and gardens. You could add more tags if you want to and that'll automatically add those to this filter at the top. That's the only thing you need to make sure you've got set up to get this to all work. So if we open up the tags, you can see parks and gardens inside there and you can have multiple tags because you could easily have a project that's spread across multiple different kinds of project types. So just bear that in mind when you're setting things up. Category has to be the category you're going to use as the filter or the query, and then you use the tags to actually put in the different filters that you want to differentiate the project types. Okay, so we come back out of this, all of these being set up, you can see categories, portfolio for everyone, and then the tags are also set up as commercial and parks and gardens. Okay, so now that's done, we need to create our page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and add a new page in, and we're gonna just call this my projects. Okay. We'll just hit publish on that or save it as a draft. It doesn't really matter. This is just a demonstration. And then once we've done that, we're going to open up Elementor. Now Elementor, we could use posts if we wanted to, to display these because they are typical posts. But what we want is a more visual way of working with that nice rollover effect. So we can use the portfolio for that. So we're going to drag and drop the portfolio widget in. And you can see this just pulls in uh, what it considers to be the right thing, which in this example is every single post regardless of what kind of category. Now, even though we're only using one category in this example, you may have multiple categories. You could have news, you could have you know, business information, but you only want to target that portfolio type. So we're going to do that first of all. So to come down to our query, and inside there, we've got a couple of options. We've got include and exclude, the source. So if we had custom post types, for example, we could use that as the source. However, we're sticking to just posts in this example. So post is perfectly fine. We can include if we want to, and we can also exclude. So for example, we want to do is include this by a specific term. So we're going to choose term as the option. Then underneath it opens up the term info box, which is where we can input the term. So this term, which we're going to be using is simply the category of portfolio. So if we just start typing portfolio in, you can see that pulls up categories of portfolio. You can use tags inside here as well. There's lots of different options you can use inside this section. So we're going to choose portfolio. Now you're not going to see any change because like I say, the example that I've got, everything is included in the portfolio. I don't have any other category with posts assigned to it. You can see we get in the rollover effect and we'll come back to take a look at styling that in a little moment. 
Now underneath, we can sort the order. In other words, we can do the ordered by date, but we could change that if we wanted to. You can say past day, past week, and so on, or custom. We can order them by the date, the title, menu order, or random. And you can also order them ascending or descending. So you can sort of set this up how you want to display the information. The ignore sticky posts is if you created sticky posts as part of WordPress when you're posting, then this would ignore those. It's up to you if you want to use this. If you don't use sticky posts, it's not really going to do anything either way. Now, underneath, you'll see I've got advanced query options, and I'm sure this will pop up as in, if I don't mention it, people wonder why they don't have that. This is because I have the advanced query plugin, which is a free plugin. I also have done a video on this recently, which I'll put a link in the description below so you can take a look at that. You could use this in conjunction with the normal Elementor Pro feature set and get even more selective on how you want to filter data. I'm not going to touch upon that. Just so you know, that's not something that's straight out of the box with Elementor Pro. That is a third party plugin, but it is completely free. And if you want to add an extra layer of functionality to your portfolios and you want to get an extra layer of filtering and sorting and querying and all those kinds of things, that's definitely a plugin to take a look at. Okay, so we've done the basics. We've set those things up. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to come in and choose the filter bar option and set that up as well, because currently you can see we have no filter options. We're going to enable this, and then you can see it says taxonomy. So what we need to do is open that up, and we can choose between categories and tags. We've used tags, like I say, for things like commercial and parks and gardens. So all we need to do is choose the tags option, and that will then pull in the tags that are associated with these posts. That's pretty much it. All we're left to do now is just style things the way that we want. It's nothing complex about this. It's a very simple setup, but it just looks great. And it's a, a really cool way of just configuring things. So let's just come back to our layout. Let's just change this over now so we get better quality images. We'll adjust that side of things. If we come into the Styles tab then, this is where we can control how things look on the page itself. So let's just set 30 to both of these so everything looks nice and neat and tidy. If you want to control the overlay, you can do just that. So you can say we can set our background. We can set this to be white, for example, and we'll adjust the opacity on there. And you can see now when we mouse over, we get this sort of white out effect. But you can assign any kind of effect that you want. The color then, if we're going to set this to be a dark gray, and that will control the text color when we overlay over it. You can adjust the typography if you want to as well. So you can get this to make sure it all fits in with how everything looks on your site. So you're using consistent styling, for example. Let's just set that to something like 400. So that looks nice and neat. And we'll set it to be uppercase as well. Other than that, I'm not really going to do anything to it. That's looking pretty cool. Then we've got the filter bar, which we can then control the styling and everything on there. So we can just do the same thing again. And we can just adjust everything on there. Typography, we'll just set that to be... 400 and we'll set this to be uppercase as well so everything looks nice and tidy we'll just make it a little smaller though so it just isn't quite so in your face so that's a 400 there we go okay so we can adjust the spacing and everything on this that's pretty much it done now if we hit update on there and we test the page out you'll see that we can take a look at everything in action so let's preview this so there we go there's our city park ice park fantasy park and so on we can Use the filter at the top to get exactly what we want or all of those. And if we click on one, it'll take us through then to the details. We didn't have to set that up. That's automatically done. And this is just using my template that I've built as part of Elementor Pro. But if you didn't create that, it will just go through to the normal post, uh, sort of single post template kind of thing. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. As always, I will drop the links to any of the tools that I've mentioned in the description below so you can take a look at those and see the videos that are created to give you an idea of how you could use those alongside this particular widget. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty simple but effective effect that helps make your portfolio just that little bit more interesting. And if you want to take your results to another level, you can get super creative with the individual portfolio items and add all kinds of cool effects and additional information using tools like Advanced Custom Fields or Jet Engine. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. All the applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description below, so you can check those out. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.